about traveling at 1100 kilometers per hour. Hyperloop technology developed and thought of by Elon Musk promises just that and we have with us Rob Lloyd, the CEO of Hyperloop One, to talk to us about their plans vis-a-vis -vis the technology. Rob, to begin with, what is Hyperloop and what are your plans around that? Well, as you said, Hyperloop is the first of the new modes of transportation to be developed since we invented the airplane in the early 1900s. So it's been a century since we've had something that's really been a breakthrough. So high-speed transportation, point to point, we only go to the destination, we don't stop along the way. All electric, so it's green and very, very friendly to the environment. Super fast, so we can redefine where we live and where we work and the relationships we have between cities that sometimes are, are held back by growing traffic. Um, so just think of going the speed of an airplane into a city center for the price of a bus ticket, the impact that could make on how we live our lives and where we choose to live. It's a very transformational idea and we're actually making great progress to take that vision and make it a reality uh, and, and very make it happen very soon. Very soon you said and I'm going to take you to that. Uh, where is Hyperloop one vis-a-vis -vis the technology? We, we've come to believe that you're having pilot runs uh, being carried out right now. When could we see the actual first journey being you know, undertaken anywhere across the world and if you could tell us where that would be? Yeah, so our company is building a full-scale prototype. We're the only company in the world building a full-scale Hyperloop prototype and that's going on as we speak in the deserts just north of Las Vegas. So uh, we've, we've uh, shown today the audience here in New Delhi uh, images of that. In the next months ahead we'll begin testing. We'll invite the world to come and see that Hyperloop is real sometime before the summer. And when we actually say, wait a minute, this technology that sounds so futuristic has actually been built, then our mission as a company is to work with those countries that would like to be first. By the way, not everybody wants to be first, and that's okay. So our idea is why don't we reach out, ask individuals, who would like to come up with great ideas, which we've found in India, the largest number of grounds up, uh, bottoms up ideas that were submitted to a global competition that we hosted came from India. We've seen some fantastic ideas and we've been discussing them here at today's summit. So where there's gr a bottoms up uh, opportunity, where governments are supportive and, and we're in alignment with the initiatives that they're trying to build, new manufacturing jobs, more efficient infrastructure, better quality of life for citizens, perhaps different urban models that don't require more people to have to move to very expensive cities, but perhaps could live in the towns they live in and then still get jobs uh, in different places. That's actually what we're looking for with governments that would like to see this change, where we can finance the projects, where they do make economic sense, and quite frankly, all of those attributes could very well happen in India, and that's why we're launching our company today, and that's why uh, we're very, very excited by the tremendous response we've had. You mentioned India, and so I'm going to pick you back to India, and I'm going to stick to India for a bit now. Why India? Considering, you know, and let me, let me put these points across. Our railway system runs at about 50 to 70 kilometers per hour, and we have accidents at that speed also. Mm -hmm such as the infrastructure in India right now, what makes you confident that such a model where transport, transportation is happening at il almost 1100 kilometers per hour can actually happen in a country like India with the population density that we have, the, with the infrastructure that we have? How, what makes you so confident about India? Yeah, so the first thing that happens when you build new infrastructure um, is you don't want to disrupt people's lives. We don't want to, people to have to move their towns or, or villages. Uh, and in the dense cities that have been developed over centuries, they're very crowded right now. So the first principle is that we would elevate the infrastructure, the tube in which we travel above the ground on small pylons. So we could still have farmlands and still have the ability of people to move safely underneath of them. I don't know enough about accidents in rail. My intuition tells me a lot of those are at level crossings where you have to cross over the at grade railway track. So we're a closed system. We don't have anything that can interfere with the Hyperloop. We'll build an all digital control system to space the distance between the pods and they'll actually branch off and branch on to that main system that we build as we begin to construct the route. So we will be safer because inherently we're a closed system. We'll be all digital because we're building something new and we won't need to switch anything mechanical. We'll be off-grade 
so that there is a, a safety implication for both people traveling in cars or buses or for livestock or whatever. And we'll be in tunnels when we come into the cities so we won't have to interfere with the very complex and already built up areas of today's uh, urban cities. So less intrusive, faster to build, less expensive, and I think those are some of the things that would be very interesting to India to see something that you might imagine taking 15 years should be able to happen in five. And our objective as a company is to have the first production Hyperloop system running by 2022, which means we'll, we have a lot of work to do before then, but that will happen when we get full support of governments from the top down and we actually think of some of the advantages that we can bring to infrastructure projects that haven't been available up to this point. Full support of governments is the next question that I'm going to come on to. But something you said before that, the closed loop system. What sort of contingency measures do we have for this? What happens in event where, say, there's a power failure, considering this is going to be running on electromagnets, what if there's a power failure in, in a country like India where we're power deficient in some uh, yes. areas still? What happens if, say, power goes out? Or, or in any eventuality, how, how, how does somebody rescue the passengers? So obviously safety. Is, an, is a top concern. And we actually have uh, very uh, great investors and partners that are already uh, high-speed rail operators like SNCF, the French operator of the TGV that you're familiar with. So we're working with them on the safety procedures that would be required to make this happen. But remember one thing, um, when I'm flying at 42,000 feet and something goes wrong, it's not very good. If I'm 15 feet above the ground, and something goes wrong and the tube fills with air, that's not a catastrophic environment. We will obviously have evacuation areas and an emergency escape. We'll make accommodations for people that may have a physical disability. So all of those are things we're working on today with regulators. But five years from now, this mode of transportation should be safer than air, safer than rail, and safer than cars because we can build something today and work with regulators today to overcome some of the challenges that we've seen in the past. And a closed environment, which may sound a little bit different for us, will create inherently a safer environment. And we're at grade, we're on, on the ground level, so really uh, if something bad might happen, uh, the consequences are much less uh, dramatic.